What is up, everybody? How's it going? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. I am Josh KI6NAZ. I'm glad to have you here. Today we're turning up the band switch. We're turning on the bands and we're gonna be running some FT8 call. Uh, we haven't done FT8 call in a long time. It feels like, man, almost a year since the last time we talked about FT8, uh, sorry, FT8, JSA call. I remember when it used to be called FT8 call, but it is JSA call. And basically what it is is a HF digital kind of chat program. That's the best way I could say it. But it's got a lot of really interesting functionality that we're going to walk through. So welcome, everybody. I'm super glad you're all here. Uh, I saw Mike in there, K8MRD. He's in the house. Got a lot of people showing up. Thank you so much for hopping on. I really do appreciate it. We got them new memes. Check out that Mandalorian meme. <laughs> there it is. That's a good one, too. <laughs> I love the uh, angry, angry woman and cat. I uh, mean, all right. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Very good. So what is up, everybody? I am Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for coming out. I uh, put on my old school streaming hat to go with a, uh, a video, a thing, a topic we haven't talked about in a while, which is JSA Call. So this should be a lot of fun. Now, before we do that, though, I always, you know, have a little bit of news, and there is a lot to cover. So we'll try to we'll try to get through this quickly before we dive on in. So the first thing, let me let me flip over here. Uh, I got a, a care package uh, in the mail from uh, John over at uh, part97.com. Sent me a bunch of T-shirts, which we're looking at. Uh, right here. And in fact, I'm wearing one of them, which says uh, Go Play Radio, which I think is awesome. Um, I'm going to give some of these away in a future date, but really quickly, I want to go through some of these. Uh, sent me this really cool American flag shirt, one that says seven with a three for the E, which I think is super cool. That's awesome. By the way, John, if you uh, go check out the link in the description, he's doing a discount on all the shirts right now for the Ham Radio Crash Course. Just go to his website. No need for a code or anything. They're on uh, sale right now. Uh, that's a good one. One of those Helvetica font shirts. Some of you might know what's coming up next. Yes. <laughs> this is probably the best one in the lot. Uh, Run Single Sideband. Super cool shirt. That is just an awesome shirt. So uh, I'm going to give some of those away. Not today. Not today. I didn't plan for that, but um, wanted to give a big shout out to John for sending me those over. That was super, super nice of him. Oh, yeah. You guys can't look at that yet. Don't don't look at that. That's a uh, that's for a future video. <laughs> uh, so uh, no seven, three, seven with Evan in it. That would be good for Evan. But it's the other way around. Yeah, run SSB, man. Uh, that's super cool. I wore that to the HRO today. That was uh, that was a hot, a hot uh, <laughs> shirt for sure. So thank you, John, over at part97.com. Make sure you take the link in the description to check them out. And let's so there's their website, part97, cool looking website. You can check that out. Is it live right now? Maybe we can, maybe I can do a quick refresh, and we'll see. Sale everything's on sale <laughs> so if you're interested go check that out uh let's see uh what else do we got youth on the air is coming up so make sure we uh we get that set up yoda month if you're interested make sure you go sign up for uh getting involved with that yoda region 2.org the quirky qrp i think Jer uh jace not jerson uh james sorry james hannibal's in the chat and he is uh doing a uh, not a, a discount for Quirky QRP HRCC there. So link is in the description as well if you're interested in a Slink Tenna. Again, uh, also none of these links that I'm showing you, not affiliated with me, I just like what they're doing and they decided to offer a uh, bit of a discount to the people that are watching. So super cool, I'm glad they did that and thanks again. So uh, last but not least, Palomar Engineers, we sorted out the uh, coupon so now you can go to their website and if you buy anything for suppressing rfi in your shack which i recommend they now have a coupon code which you can use um, and it is working so thank you palomar for setting that up and that is hrcc 73 so make sure you go check that out if you're interested in some pretty good stuff um, over at palomar engineers they make a lot of really good stuff you should check it out for if you have a, a high noise floor 
like even an S5, if you have a, just a continual S5, a lot of hash, maybe you've got some of those vertical lines that you turn to it and you get that hum. Uh, that's probably like switching mode power supplies. Those are all things that RFI solutions can help knock down, particularly into your receivers, which is obviously the most sensitive part of your equipment line. So very cool. Uh, yeah, so by the way, for those of you that are already indoctrinated in JSA call, we have a group call. It is at HRCC. That's it. So you can set that up right now. People are already talking on JSA call. Don't worry for those of you that are new to it. I'm going to walk you through all of it and get you set up there. So hang tight. We'll get there in a second. Uh, other thing going on, the uh, 10 meter contest, I believe, is this weekend, which starts at zero UTC Saturday and run, runs through 2359 UTC December 14th and 15th. And the bands of operation, 10 meters only and single sideband and CW. So this is, a, this is a really good opportunity to get out there for the technicians. If you are a new technician, now is the time to get on the radio and get on the air because it's gonna be a fun weekend for you and hopefully you're able to make some contacts via 10 meters, so that would be great. All right, so let's go over here really quick. I posted the link in the description for JS8 Call. What is JS8 Call? JS8 Call is a digital mode, as I mentioned, that's based off of FT8. And it looks a bit like this. This is my logging program. Let me minimize this for a second. This is what it looks like. You might be saying to yourself, well, there's some similarities to, to FT8 in there, right? Uh, people are automatically keying my uh, radio right now. That's why it's transmitting. Uh, so you got a waterfall down here. And boy, those squares, those look pretty similar to FT8, don't they? Uh, the difference being some of you are thinking, wow, that's a that's just a, a, a non-stop uh, bunch of data right there. It spans over multiple 15-second intervals. And if you're familiar with FT8, it's 15 seconds for one person, the caller, 15 seconds for the responder, 15 seconds for the caller, so on and so on until you complete the QSO. And it's an automated QSO process. There is, it's just a handshake, an exchange of your uh, contact information or your signal report. JSA call is completely different. JSA call allows you to send messages back and forth, like right now. We've got multiple people that have said, you know, there's Matt. Good luck on the stream. No smoke today. I don't know what that means. Um, actually, he sent me a couple of them. A couple of people have asked me for a signal report. And so basically what we're seeing here is you've got all this data going on, this traffic, and you can see it here on the left. These are all conversations people are having right now. For those of you that have used PSK31, it'll be a little bit similar in that the left side is going to be a list of, of you know stuff going on in the band. And you can see the offset of where you're at in Hertz here, the age of how long ago, and the SNR of how strong the signal was coming in. Signal to noise ratio, meaning how high above the noise is the signal you're receiving. It's kind of like when we say negative 10 dB in FT8. This is a little di different way of explaining it or showing it. And that's what this is. Then in the middle, this yellow portion is what you're listening on right here, your time slice. And you can move up and down and select a different time slice. And then down below that is the area where you would type your message on, which I'll show you all of this um, as we get going. Now, to the right is all the stations that you have heard, how long you heard them, how long ago, how strong you heard their signal. Um, and so that's the basic gist of it. There's a lot more to it, which I said we're going to walk through, like these buttons on the top. What are all those about? But anyway, let's open the beer. I do have a good one. I went to a British pub for a happy hour, and they had bottles to go. And the bottle that I picked up was How Heavy This Mash, which I kind of think is a How Heavy This Crown or How Heavy the, uh, the Head That Wears the Crown. This is a barley wine, and this is coming from a British uh, pub, proper pub. They had hand pulls, so they had to hand pull the beer out. So that was pretty cool. And this comes from uh, brewed at the Yorkshire Square Brewery in Torrance, California. So pretty awesome. So that was good times. So somebody's uh, KE0Wiz is sending me something. That's what that red means, kind of like you would expect to see on FT8. How heavy this axe. Oh, that might be. There you go. Oh, yeah, because it's got a head and it's dead. Yeah, that makes sense. There you go. So that looks that looks like it's going to be pretty beefy. 
It's on the lighter side for a barley wine. It's only 10%, but that's still pretty, pretty serious. So, yeah, I've got my uh, my old school blue live stream hat on. When I first started the live streams, I would always wear this hat. And since we're doing something that I haven't done in a long time, um, I figured we'd do that. So let's say you just downloaded it. You're following along with me. You just downloaded it. Maybe you have a 7300. Um, I hope you do, because it's going to be really easy for me to explain how to set it up on the 7300. But if you don't, but you do have a way of interfacing your radio with your computer, then you're going to have a pretty easy time setting this up if you've ever done FT8 before, because it's very similar. Anyway, bring up the software. You're going to go up to File, Settings, and you're going to be greeted with a window that looks an awful lot, whoop, looks an awful lot like FT8. You're going to put in your pertinent information like your call sign, your maidenhead grid locator. And this one goes a little bit beyond just the four characters that you might normally use. Um, in this case, I'm up to eight characters on this one to give a little bit tighter uh, location on where I'm at. That comes important later because this actually will do uh, APRS over HF digital over through JSA call. So I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. For call sign groups, if you want to follow along with what we're doing on the stream, add an at symbol, HRCC. That will let you basically see messages that are coming to just our call sign group that we're going to use. That's what it's called. You'll still get the all call group, which I will again explain, but make sure you've got at HRCC. For those of you that may have been trying to message me, if you don't have that on, you might have a harder time doing that. So make sure you do that. Uh, and then these are just stock configurations for replying to CQ messages or when you click CQ, the reply messages to when you get uh, someone asks you for a signal report and then your location, you can add in a little thing about your rig, your antenna, your location. This is kind of like the brag sheet as it's called. All right. So under radio, uh, I have the 7300 selected. I'm saying I want to do cat control. COM port 3 is my USB port, right? And so this is going to change depending on where you have your 7300 connected or how you have your radio connected to your computer. You need to make sure you have that clicked. And then you want data mode is going to be data or packet. Again, this is for the 7300. 7300 works off of a data mode that it can run in, which is generally upper sideband. And for split operation, I just have it going to the rig and let it handle it. And for text uh, transmit delay, it's got a 0.2 second transmit delay. That's stock. Um, I also have a delay on my on my 7300 already, but that's more or less for my amp. Um, I don't use that often when I'm on digital modes, but just an FYI if you're a little bit different. Now for audio, again, your mileage may vary, but with the 7300 plugged into the USB, I make sure that I've got microphone, 16 USB, 16 USB for the speakers. That's how it seems to work fine. And then for output, um, you can have it go to another speaker, another thing. Uh, I just leave that alone. Reporting. So two things here that I use. You could use it too if you wanted to. I like to upload my contacts to PSK Reporter or stations that I hear to PSK Reporter so that uh, they get uh, kind of a linked out on who's hearing them. And it's just like you would use an FT8, which I can show you later. And, oh, uh, MM says verify COM port used in the Windows Device Manager. Yep, that's a good thing to do. Um, that's easy enough to, to do that on your end. Just bring up Device Manager and make sure you're, connect, you're connected to the port that's, that's basically running that ICOM driver or whatever driver for the radio that you're running or serial cable or whatever. Now, I'm using N3 FJP Logger. I have that turned on to accept UDP ports. And that is uh, basically done here by selecting this checkbox. And it runs off your local host, which is 127.0.0.1. And then it has a port of 1100. And that is pretty much all you have to do to get up and running on JS8 Call. So the first thing <laughs> that you'll likely need to do is go ahead and get on the frequency for whatever band that you're operating on today we are operating on 40. how you do that is you click up on the top left there under the frequency 7.078 you may be showing something different click on 40 meters 7.078 now 
Uh, it looks like we've already got some people talking um, on through JSA call using the HRCC uh, call, which is here on the upper right hand side. That was what I typed in when I was in settings. That's why it shows up in the upper right. If you don't do that, you won't see it. You'll only see all call and then possibly a growing list of call signs that basically will fill out as you hear people on the left hand side. But I'll leave it clicked on HRCC. When I click on HRCC, the text box down here says, type your outgoing directed message to HRCC here. So I can say, hi, all, and then I can hit enter. Now, what you see is it'll say KI6NAZ with a line going through it. That means the next 15 seconds are going to be just for transmitting KI6NAZ. Then the next 15 seconds will likely be at HRCC. So I'm sending out a message my call first, followed by at HRCC, followed by the message that I want to send. So it'll be hi all, right? And then people can see it. They could reply to me if they want to. And how they would reply to me is click on my call sign. Uh, K8MRD asks, how do I get that uh, HRCC? So again, if you go to file settings, under call sign groups, comma separated, add H at HRCC. And then you click OK. So Ward Dixon asks, PC only or will the program work on the Mac? It will work on the Mac. It will work on Linux. It will work on PC. It will work on Raspbian, uh, Raspbian for the Raspberry Pi. So JSA call will work on pretty much everything, which is great. Uh, I want to note that JSA call is kind of built uh, with and, or sort of on top of. I don't know the full development details, but many of the same features of how the data is transferred over the air and, and how it's digitized or encoded, if you will, um, is going to be just like FT8. So it has a JS8 fast mode and a JS8 turbo mode that would be like FT4, right? So same kind of idea. Uh, right now we're just using JS8, which is your standard 15 second FT8-like handshake or, or data, um, data speed throughput, if you will. Uh, I will make one note going back to the 7800, I'm sorry, 7300. Let me show you my, my desk really quick. So my 7300's right here. Um, it's hard for you to see, but make sure that you turn off your AGC. And to do that, you hold, hit the function button, hold the AGC button, and then when it says fast, mine says off. If you roll the, VF, the VFO, roll it all the way back till off, you'll lose your signal, your S meter, but that's okay because that's kind of, we don't want that anyway. And then I like to leave mine on meter mode. So that way that helps me out. So let's go back to, all right. I should take a drink of this beer. I've been talking for a while. All right. So for Oh, hey, Rob Zars. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, I will show this too, just so that you guys get the full idea of, of getting started with this if you're having a hard time and, and I'm not getting through or, or you want something as a backup. JSA Call also has a guides page on their website. And there's a whole list of calling CQ, replying to CQ, what is all call for, send a message and display and pop up relay messages, change the order of the herd list, the HB button, directed messages, and logging. So they have a whole lot of details there that will walk you through it, but I'm going to try and walk through a lot of it now. The first thing I'm going to do, so if I started this fresh, this would be empty, but I've been operating on this for a little while. But let's say I just started it up and I wanted to know who was in my area, who was around me that could hear me um, pick up my signals. And how you find that out is you click the heartbeat button. Now, this button shows up only when you have the heartbeat mode enabled. So to enable it, there's two ways. You can go up to mode and you can select enable auto reply, enable, and, and this is multiple modes that I have enabled, but enable heartbeat networking and enable heartbeat acknowledgements. Uh, I like to leave those on when I am sitting at my station. Otherwise, I turn those off because if your station is transmitting with you not there, that's te technically a violation of our FCC rules and obligations. So I just got to mention that. So we're following 
staying on the straight and narrow. But while we're in front of the shack, I like to turn all these on. The other way to activate those is if you go to the normal multi, I, uh, multi plus auto HB, same thing there. You can change them, click them, add them. So I can turn that off and you see it just goes normal auto plus HB. But no, I want to do enable simultaneous decoding of all speeds, although I don't know how much of that is, is going to be here today, but whatever. So once you add heartbeat HB on, you'll get a button down here. So I'm going to click it. I'm actually going to find a, an empty space. So I'm going to go right here. And what I did was I just went on the waterfall, these vertical lines, and I clicked what looks like an empty space. And now I'll click HB. So you'll see here it says ready. It's going to wait for the 15 seconds that we're currently in to end. That green will turn red, just like it is, and I'll start transmitting. We're not going to hear anything, obviously, because I am transmitting. But I'm going to turn up the volume a little bit on the radio, and we will wait, and then we'll see the waterfall like come alive as people start replying to me. Here we go. A little loud. So that, that noise kind of lets me know people are replying to me. And that's what all this is, is people replying right now to me. And we should see a whole bunch of red pop up here. Okay, there you go. So I got picked up by W6 OEM at zero, uh, AG6 7TX negative 10, and so on and so forth. We'll see if anybody else pulls out. Uh, okay, so that gives me a good idea of who can hear me, which is, which is nice. So if I said, okay, great, people are, can hear me, that's really helpful. Um, so now I want to do, uh, it looks like people are talking. I just want to make sure. Somebody asked me, acknowledge? No, okay. So now I'm going to go, I'm, I'm on the same space. It still looks like it's clear. So now I know kind of who's in my area. I am being picked up. That's the first thing. You know your station's working now that you've been picked up. So I'm going to click CQ. And so I'm calling CQ, CQ, and I'm saying DM03, which gives you the four character grid square location. And so I'm going to wait. Maybe someone will reply. We'll see. And so we'll let it go for a second. And we'll just wait. Just like you would for FT8, right? We're calling CQ. The difference, though, is that this is like... Um, Instead of just double clicking and, and FT8 just kind of takes it, um, people can reply in a couple different ways to my CQ call. They could send me, um, you know, you are heard at a certain SNR or whatnot. So somebody seems to be replying because it's, it's in the timeline right here. And we'll see what they have to say. So they replied, how copy? So two people, actually three people, they all replied with how copy. And how copy is the way that uh, other stations can ask me to reply to them with a signal report. And so I may, um, I may reply. Let's see. I don't think it's going to. Okay. So we're, we'll go to Nacho. <laughs> N-A-C-H-O. Uh, so we'll find him right over here. Where is he? Do, do, do. So I just clicked on him in the left-hand side, and I'm going to say directed. It changes. This button says directed to N8CHO. I click on it, and I get a whole bunch of options here. We're going to walk through most of these, but I'm going to say, uh, let's see, send a signal report to the selected call sign. So it says uh, N8CHO SNR negative 16. So he asked me, how's the copy? You're a negative 16 good sir and it should fire off right now so right now we haven't done much other than what ft8 does right but now i can start just talking to him i could have just replied with a good copy but i'll wait and see if he replies If he doesn't reply, I can still just send him a message. I can type this up in a second. But you see it still says typing to outgoing. Oh, let's see. Uh, somebody just asked me to relay spot. Oh, that's fine. I'll let it relay. Oh, man, people. I'm going to have to turn off auto reply. Yeah. I'm turning off auto reply because uh, everybody's asking me. So there, there's a lot of commands you can send to different call signs. 
which like I said, if I right click on any of these uh, people and I say s directed message to, I could ask, what's my signal report? What is your station information? What is your grid location? What is the status of your station? And if I click any one of those, I would send that message to that call sign. And if they had auto on, they would reply back automatically. Mine is on, that's why I seem to be replying to everybody. So we'll, we'll let that finish. And we'll see if we hear back from uh, N8. CHO. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. By the way, if you haven't done so, give me a thumbs up. It helps the YouTube algorithm. Something about it, the more thumbs up you get, it puts it in front of more people that may find this type of content interesting, which would be very nice to get more people involved with amateur radio. So somebody's replying on frequency again. You see you've got data coming in right here between the little red lines. So we'll see. Uh, great. He replied to me with my SNR back saying SNR negative 10. So I'm making to him, I'm making a copy to him really good or decently enough, right? So now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to wait for it to finish, which you know it's done when you see this little diamond. Because, again, you can transmit in 15-second chunks for a very long time. I could just type up the encyclopedia in this box and just let it transmit over and over and over again, and it would just hog that whole space that chunk in the in the whatever the frequency you're on. So by seeing that little diamond, it lets me know that he's done transmitting. So I'm going to say to him, I don't know why it changed. I don't want that. There we go. Nope. There we go. Thanks for report 7-3. So I'm literally saying, saying thanks to report 7-3. Actually, I'm going to put the RR in the front for copy the the transmission so he'll see my call sign his call sign because i'm i'm sending the message directly to him it'll say rr and then respond with my following message which is thanks for report seven three and there we go so i've now taken two time chunks two 15 second time chunks to send it and uh jsa calls really smart in the way that as you're typing as it's in this little button that is now red but when it's green it will add seconds up as you type more so the more you type, the longer it's going to take to send your message. So it's sometimes good to keep your message tight and then send them out, wait for a reply, and then send back. Don't just send a big, huge dissertation because you can talk over each other, right? Uh, KX5JT, John asks, how much or how little power? It, as much power as you need to get your message to the person you're trying to get it to. Standard amateur radio rules would apply here. This works at the low signal range, right? Just like FT8 does. It's built on FT8. So this will work in a low signal situation. I use this when I'm running QRP. It's really nice for that for a lot of reasons that we will get to. Um, we got a lot to cover still, so we're going to keep moving. But basically, we just did a contact. Right, so he said, uh, N8CHO, KI6NAZ. He said info, which info would be like my shack info. He replied, and he said, thanks, 7-3. So I could, right, I could go, all right, well, we had a good little contact there. We exchanged information. Uh, let's go to, where is he? There he is. He's in blue because I have him selected, right? It gives me a little... Uh, here he's it when i hover over him it says who he's hearing and who he's heard i'm going to right click on him and i'll go log now i can go okay he said to me i was a negative 16 and i heard him at a negative 10 so i am literally making a contact i hit add to log and if i pull up my logging software there he is He's right there, which you can't see. Hold on. Boop, boop, boop. There he is. N-H-C-H-O. Because I have it connected. So now I have, uh, you know, this is my shack. I can work my contacts through FT or JSA call if I wanted to. If I was out in the field, I could do it that way. If I wanted to, you could still just not log or you could use the internal log that it has. So a couple people are replying. I have autos turned off right now. Oh, a couple people are sending me status. They want to see what my shack is right now. Uh, so Patrick Dickey says, I'm hoping that JSA call is in the Ubuntu software stores. Installing it from .deb gets me errors. So that's a good question. I don't know about 
Ubuntu specifically, but I have to believe that it probably works fine for Ubuntu. So I get it. I didn't mention it in the beginning. I was so rushed to get started. But guys, if you're watching this and you want to keep this train of going, we're going to be doing a Discord live after chat. The link for the Discord is in the description. If we've got any of the admins there, um, it would be great if they could post the link. But the link is in the description if you want to find it that way. And Discord is a great way. We have a conversation at the end of the night. Everybody's in there. We talk for quite a while, and we'll answer any of your questions. Particularly if you're new, you get to ask your question right up front. So we try and uh, we try and uh, get people that have questions right up in the front. So we've covered Heartbeat, and we've covered CQ. So that basically gets you the bread and butter of like, hey, I want to make a contact with somebody. I want to... Um, talk that'll get you started but let's say let's say you had a buddy and he's for example in florida i got matt matt ae4mq is in florida so what i want to do because because maybe i can't hear him that well so what i want to do is i'm going to go up to the top here now i could use all call and all call is like on the Discord, by the way, uh, J funny parallel, JSA call is the most Discord thing that is in ham radio. It is so much like Discord, it's not even funny. So like doing all call is like saying a, a, an at here where you ping the whole server. So if I said all call, right, I could say all call, do you hear AE4MQ? And anyone that heard him would reply to me. I'm going to keep it to HRCC though. It's the same, same process. I'm going to go right here to HRCC. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go directed to HRCC. And I'm going to say, where is he? Where is my buddy? Hold on, hold on. There's so much. Okay, so right here, query call, call sign. Please acknowledge you can communicate directly with call sign. So I'm going to click that. And then it highlights the call sign. And I'm going to add in AE4MQ because that's who I want to work a contact with. But he may not be able to hear me. Well, why do I want to know who can hear him possibly? Because JSA call allows you to relay your message through stations that can hear the station you're trying to get to, which is what I'll show you if we find somebody who can hear Matt, which I think we've got a couple people that can. So if you are a QRP guy, if you're out in the field, um, you are a backpacker, maybe you're going on a multi-day backpack trip, this is a great feature because you can send your location, you can talk to people directly, you can relay through other stations and get your message to who you want it to go to, which is an extremely powerful functionality. Let's see. So um, I've basically completed the, the transmission. Oh yeah, JC Fillings or JC, JC Lings? Says he's a Linux guy. New ham, though. Great. New ham and, and somebody who knows Linux, you're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, Linux is great. So let's see if we got... Oh, somebody's replying. We can see it in the waterfall. Okay. Three people replied. Yes, they can hear. And what they're going to say next, because we don't see the diamond yet, they're going to tell me how loud the strength of Matt is into them. And then I'll pick who's ever got the highest... Let's see. Uh, okay, so somebody has... Two people have them in a negative three. Oh, boy, they're stacked up. Okay, so I'm going to go look at the raw message. So somebody's saying uh, W5TCB has him at a negative three. So we're going to use him. W5TCB. If you're watching right now, maybe don't transmit for a second or turn auto off because I'm going to relay through you. So I'm going to go down to W5TCB. He's right there because I clicked on his message. And I'm going to say directed message. I'm going to go down to message. Please relay this message to its destination under directed message. So I right clicked on him, went to directed message, and I'm going to say message. Please relay this, relay this message. And I want it to go to AE4MQ. Hi, Matt. Hope you're watching. And I'm making this a little long. Watching stream. So it says one minute transfer. Here we go. So I'm going to try and relay through W5 TCW if he's not transmitting. Hopefully he's not. <laughs> 
Oh, he might be transmitting to me right now. Well, don't stop transmitting. <laughs> Let me. Let me use your station to transmit my message. Okay, so we're transmitting right now. Let me pop out that chat. Pop out that chat, though. All right. I'm a little cramped for space because I'm using the upper screen, obviously, to display uh, what we're doing here. So, all right. So it's going to keep going, right? We've already gone through multiple 15-second passes at this point. Oh, uh, Rob Zar says he passes uh, extra this week. Congratulations. Sorry, I saw the super chat, but I didn't see the second part. That's why I got to open this up. Got to open the, uh, the, the pop-out chat up earlier. So Rob Zarge, if you're walk watching, sorry about that. Congratulations, buddy. All right, so we'll see. Maybe, maybe it went through. Maybe not. We'll find out. But that would be how you'd relay. You would use a station that could hear the station you want to talk to. If you couldn't talk to them directly, you could go through that secondary station, which is super, super awesome. So that alone is a major, major feature of JSA Call that is worth learning how to use it, right? A tool that you keep in your, uh, your smarts area of your brain to be, to be able to use it in the future. That's a very important skill, right? That's why we do a lot of this stuff is to say, hey, no, this is a useful thing. You should learn how to use this because... Um, that's that's pretty important. So let's see. It looks like Cade MRD is sending me something. We'll see what he's got to say. Oh, a couple of people are stacked up on my frequency right now. Uh, so there's probably a lot of people that are trying to get in and talk to me. We'll see uh, what they're what they're trying to do. But uh, or maybe I can't hear him. But I'll use I'll use Mike now. K eight M R D. I can hear him. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna send him some messages now. Couple of people. Let's see. Ah, okay. So W five T C B A E four M Q. Hi Matt. Hope you're watching the stream. D E. Okay, looks like it went through. Good. Okay. So that would be how you'd send that message if you wanted to relay traffic that way. Very good. So now let's let's do something with Mike. What's up, Mike? Where are you at? K eight M R D. You're up here. So let's say I wanted to find out what's going on with Mike. I'm going to right click on Mike. I'm going to say directed message and I'm going to say, hey man, send me the info on your station. Let's see what Mike's running. Oh, wow. That is, uh... so I'm sending him mine. That was not what I wanted to do. <laughs> so let's say you sent too much, you, you sent the wrong thing. Click the halt button and it'll stop immediately. Hey, that's, that's a good thing to know. I want to ask him what his info is on his station. So I will click on info question mark. <laughs> there we go. That's a little bit better. Don't do anything, Mike. Just wait. <laughs> we'll see if Mike can reply. Curtis Harbin. Take it easy, buddy. 73. Hey Jerry K6PDE in La Habra. You are you are my neighbor. <laughs> You're right down the street from me. So let's see if Mike uh, replies. Ooh. Uh yeah, so if Mike doesn't have auto reply turned on, he will not reply. So I will uh, I will turn my auto reply back on. In case somebody wants to ping me specifically. So I went up here and I clicked on auto reply. So now I should reply if somebody asks me for an SNR. If they want to know how good I hear them. 
Um, oh, wait. Somebody. I see. So it's going to ping red whenever someone says KI6NAZ. So I don't know what's happening here. So it'll. They could be in the middle of transmitting. So we're waiting for them to finish up. So uh, somebody is sending me an SNR. There you go. K8MRD is hearing me at negative 14. So very good. So he. He's responding, but he's not automatically responding, it looks like. So here's what happens with automatic turned on. AG5VX said, KI6NAZ SNR? Question mark? And my system automatically replied back and gave him an SMR or SNR of plus four. So he's coming in pretty strong. That's what automatic does. You can just leave that running, which is great if um, if you have a, a decent station. You know, I'm, I'm kind of close to mountains where people activate soda. I could leave my station on, and if, you know, somebody needed to relay or, you know, they were on QRP and they couldn't get out that far, they could technically relay through through me. That wouldn't count necessarily for soda, but it's an interesting, it's an interesting concept. So I'm getting replies back. My SNR is negative uh, 13. Uh, let's see, I got a negative four, or maybe I was the negative four, yeah. So, okay, we'll leave that for a second. Um, looks like a couple people are replying to me, so I'll wait and see what they're doing. Possibly replying to me, it's on the same time slice here. Jim Noel Noenton or Knowlton, is this considered RIDI slash data? So RIDI is its own mode. That's radio teletype. This is considered a digital mode for HF radio. I'm sure you could use it on weak signal VHF, UHF, but generally it's HF. So it's considered a digital mode. KX5JT John asks, is it legal? I don't know if he's talking about JSA call or somebody he's talking to, but yes, it is legal. So somebody just asked me, N5SKT asked me, KI6NAZ info, question mark, and my station is automatically replying with uh, ICOM 7300, Hexbeam, Cerritos. So it's a little bit of a brag sheet. I'm basically saying, hey, um, I have a 7300, I'm running into a Hexbeam on 40 meters, and I've, I'm in Cerritos, Cerritos, California. So very good. Okay, so I'm going to turn off auto again because we've got some more stuff to show you. But you're getting, I'm hopefully you're getting the gist of this, right? The important thing to figure out, and I, I think that's that's the part I'll, I'll spend a little bit of time here. So when you do that heartbeat, which again, I'll, I'll do it again right now, and there's not a big deal about doing this. I'll click heartbeat. So I'm going to pull back in the stations, right? And those stations, um, I will add to the right-hand side here. And from that, I can make calls or ask for specific things or, you know, whatever. Work contact, get information about where they're located, uh, get information about what kind of shack they're running, or just talk to them all through this application. So it's, it's pretty smart. There's a lot of, there's a lot of capability here. Uh, Striker K7 IBU asks, is this a qualifying mode for soda work? That is a great question. I am not prepared to answer that. I don't know. Uh, when I was starting out with soda, FT, well, sorry, PSK31 was still popular, and you couldn't really use that. Or, or, By and large, digital modes are not something that's been entirely embraced by soda yet, at least from what I found to be an easy way to just kind of rack up the contacts and be done. With that said, as long as you're not relaying, it, it shouldn't be a problem. So all these people replied to me with, with my signal report. So technically, they all get added up here, and it gets a little star if I've, uh, which is received call signs are displayed. Wait, sorry. Received call signs are displayed with time since last heard, SNR, and grid. So the star basically means I can hear them or they replied to me and I picked them up. So that's why they get a star. So that means it's a, it's a good station if you wanted to make a call out or talk to somebody or whatever. Uh, Alex K6 FTL, faster than light travel, asks, Hi, Josh, I can hear you but get nothing through to you. Running 30 watts on a tri-band inverted B V in Mission Viejo. 
So your problem is probably you're too close to me. So we're not, I am not running an NVIS antenna. My radiation pattern is not vertical and then down. Um, and yours is also not NVIS because you have a null point right at the top of the tip of your vertical. So you're transmitting out and I'm transmitting out and we're just going whoosh, over the top of each other. Hey, <laughs> Matt, <laughs> Matt Quince, <laughs> AU4MQ says, you're, <laughs> Josh, your message came through fine. <laughs> he sent me $2, so that was a $2 message. <laughs> Don't do that. That's not what this is about. <laughs> you could have sent me that a different way. But anyway, thank you for the support. Um, it So K, uh, KX5JT John asks, is unattended relay transmissions legal? John, no. And I mentioned that earlier in the stream. I don't know if you were watching earlier. I said specifically, if you are in front of the computer, you can go here and click auto, auto reply. But if not, turn it off. Don't run auto reply if you're not in front of that station. If I didn't make that clear enough, I'm saying it again. So now I, you've populated or you're running right now or you will be running in the future and you've populated this whole list with people you might want to talk to. Uh, that's great. And you, and you could reply to any one of them. I could right click on K0 FBS and I could say, say uh, send directed message. And I could say, you know, reply message or send a directed message, which would be literally I want to send a message to him and he'd show up there or I can ask his information or whatever. So instead of that, let's, let's hop on the HRCC. So I'm just going to click, I'm going to click right on HRCC and I'm going to say, um, all please reply. Maybe I can type reply. If you can copy this. So I'm going to send out a message just to everybody on the HRCC uh, call group to see who can copy what I'm sending out, which again, this is a call group. Basically, this is like a privacy channel on like an FRS radio. <laughs> it's kind of an easy way of thinking about it. Uh, I, for people that have this listed, they'll see the call HRCC at HRCC and they'll get the message. But everybody else they're not going to see it or they won't care. They won't display to them as like, oh, hey, I should reply to this or, or I should pay attention to what he's sending. So again, I'm sending this from my home station out of my antenna, transmitting um, easternly, let's call it, transmitting to the eastern part of the country. And we'll see. Maybe maybe people are copying me. Uh, Brambo... 4791 says, keep keep up the vids, doing good. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Yes, Anthony Progar. We we are uh, going to get to that. We're going to get to that. That's kind of the late game uh, pro stuff, but we're already running out of time. I have a couple more things I want to talk about, and then we'll get to we'll get to some of this stuff. So we'll see. So we got somebody replying. All right. So we've talked about uh, using the heartbeat, replying directly to a person, working a relay, working through another station to get your message out. So somebody's replying. N1 Wax is replying to me. So I can see his call sign. And it says KI6NAZ in red. A couple people are. Message copied. A couple of people. There you go. Uh, NHCHO says RR. So that was a Roger Roger. <laughs> Gary Cullen says, cool, a radio chat room. Yeah, kind of. But a little bit more than that because you can send messages, relay messages, send messages to an inbox that can be delayed or held for a later time at which they can be downloaded. Um, and you can transmit an APRS beacon. So lots of people are replying. They can copy. <laughs> How copy endpoint. 
Endpoint is good. So let's say I wanted to uh, transmit where I was located. So I'm going to say, hey, HRCC, directed call. And I want to say, send my current station maidenhead grid locator. So I'm going to send that out. And we'll see what happens right now, if anybody has this turned on. I did this earlier, though, on all call. I'm using HRCC to not, like, spam people. Okay, so I just, whoop, oh, I'm almost done. Almost done. Okay, just finished. All right, so I'm going to go to... So let me switch this over here. Oh, wrong one. There we go. So I just dumped my grid square out. Anybody that picked me up, let's find out. I'm going to do an APRS query on myself. Go. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. So I got picked up at a couple hours ago. Let's see. Let's go to info. So this was picked up over. Uh, this was picked up over uh, F, uh, JSA call. So basically, by transmitting my GPS location, people will ping or upload it to uh, APRS. So you can avoid technically having a HT that does APRS, as so long as you have a radio that can communicate over. RF has JSA call connected somehow like through a Raspberry Pi and some decent time source. Let's see if that got updated. I probably shouldn't have used the HRCC. I probably should have used all call, but that's okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's send a directed message. So with a uh, directed message, I'm going to go to HRCC again, and I'm going to say directed message to HRCC. And I'm going to say, please store this message in your inbox. And so the message is going to be, thanks for watching. Now, what that's going to do is transmit my message out to the receiving stations that are listening for the call sign group, which is HRCC. But it could be all call. It could be uh, just one call sign you're trying to send to. And what will happen? Oh, you're not looking at the right thing. Burp, burp, burp. There we go. So I'm transmitting out that uh, message. Thanks for watching. And there's a code behind it, B3O. So now, if you are listening on at HRCC, man, this is almost a mode that uh, we should run for like multiple hours live just so we can work through a bunch of contacts. See, there's all these people talking right here all on top of it. So if you were listening on at HRCC, you could view the inbox by clicking at HRCC and go to view. Oh, see, all those people got that message. All those people got that message. And how they would view it is they'd go to view, and they go to show message inbox. So if somebody wanted to, go ahead, um, at me a message. And how you would do it is you'd right click on my call sign. You go directed message. You go message, please store this message in your inbox. And you could do it right now. So why would you use this? Well, let's say you uh, were camping and you had your radio set up 
You had your, you know, you're running the wonderfully awesome KX2 that sips battery life, and you wanted to just let it run overnight while you slept. You're not transmitting, you're not auto replying, but you are receiving. And so people could send you messages in while you're sleeping. You could wake up in the morning to an inbox of messages. Pretty, pretty cool. So maybe we'll, somebody will send me a message. Somebody send me a message. I can't send a message to myself. <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, good. Uh, well, it worked earlier, Julian. I appreciate that, though. And thanks for hopping in, buddy. Julian's kind of the JS8 call pro. If you go to the website, uh, he's literally all over the thing. I made multiple videos on it. There you go. So I just got a message from K9BFG. So let's go to... Actually, we're going to go to his. Boop, boop, boop. So I got a flag here notifying in bold that I have a message. Um, oh, got another one. <laughs> so they're stacking up right now. Let's do the first one. Oh, where'd my inbox go? There it is. There we go. So we got the good one. Reply, or his message was good show. Next one. AG, uh, AG5VX, view, show message. Great job on the stream. So you could go to sleep and you would get messages on people coming in and there you go. You could wake up in the morning and you'd have a whole list of... <laughs> K Booty sent me a message. What did K Booty say? This is a message. There you go. That is indeed a message. Oh, okay. Let's well, let's let's just do it the way Julian said, and we can just try it. APRS grid, and I don't have the ten digit. I don't think. Hold on. Come on, buddy. Yeah, I don't have my, hold on, I'll use my other grid. Let's see if that works. It might not work though, because it's probably not long enough. And my eight grid. Yeah, locate and then send. Oh, K9PFG is sending me a message. I'll just leave this on uh, for the after stream. By the way, the after chat on Discord, uh, I'm live on Twitch. I am Angry Shoverbot. Don't ask me how. Actually, I'll tell you offline how I came up with that name. Um, so I'll be on Twitch after this. But uh, I'll just leave this running if you guys want to send me messages. And we can work a uh, JSA call into the late night. Uh, James, I don't think I got any messages from you. No, I didn't. Uh, you are north of me. I'd have to turn the beam if I wanted to get over, uh, pick you up. Maybe. But are you trying to QRP? There you go. The K4 boy got it. There's my, uh, there's my Twitch if you want to follow me on Twitch. Okay, let's check these messages really quick. So first one, view. Inbox. HRCC is the bomb GJ. Thanks. <laughs> is there an easier way to do that since I have Julian in the house? How do I just open the inbox off of this? I don't want to have to keep doing it that way. Ugh. What a long way of doing it. JS8 rocks. It does rock. And I'm, so the first time we did a video on this, I think we had a lot of capability, but not as much capability as this has. It's it's come a long way, and it's, it's really, really good to use. So for those of you that... Um, have tried out FT8 and you like its low 
signal, weak signal capability, JSA Call is a, a fantastic thing to try out, particularly if you like something that's a little bit more chatty. You know, you can actually talk to another human being without it just being a static, stale, you know, um, you know, talk and reply kind of thing. Prepare your inbox. All right, my inbox is prepared. So very good. All right, is there anything else I didn't show? Uh, I did the relay. We did the message inbox. We did the APRS. Uh, okay, so that might... Oh, oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay, so uh, do I need to be a part of that grid group or that call group then? So let me add APRS and see if that changes anything. It probably doesn't, but maybe I'll, I'll get APRS pickups. Let's see. Did I close it? Oh my God. No. The last time I got it to work was on all call, but let's see. Uh, Jim Knowlton says, can you do this with an HT or do you need an SDR? I missed the very beginning. So you generally want a uh, HF radio to do it and some kind of computer system to make it work. So if I all call grid, I thought that was how you do it. That was what worked when I did it earlier today. So I just do that. Uh, Alice Ramirez asks, how many watts do you run usually for JSA call? Is it a out the same watts as FT8? So FT8 will, and, and this is an important point for anybody that's stuck along this long. Um, let me make this point. FT8 will work into weak signal propagation, but it is not a weak signal mode. It's not that it requires that you run weak signal. This is also doesn't require you run at weak signal. You can run at 1500 watts if you wanted to make a contact with somebody that required 1500 watts. There's no particular reason why you must run low power, but some of the challenge, actually some of the fun parts about these modes is that they work so low into the noise, so you don't need to run a lot of power. Oh, let me turn auto back on. Uh, let's see. My power supply screams at 100 watts. Yeah, so it depends. You can, uh, K Booty says, I run 100 watts, but I am rude. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, too. So Rob says, the splatter looks great on the waterfall. So if you're going to run more power, um, you generally need to use the power slider or control your volume through the operating system or through, like, a signal link or something like it to, to reduce that. You don't want to really splatter, so keep that in mind. All right. There you go. So Julian, uh, he replied, APRS. Oh, APRIS. Do I need to be APRIS or just APRS? Uh, let me go back in the chat. I only used APRS, so that might have been wrong. There's nothing wrong with, with running a bit of power. Um, at the same time to get your message out, particularly if you need it. Like, I mean, if it's important, then um, I'll just wait for Julian to reply. I don't know if he's still copying me. Is it APR? Oh, it's APRIS. Okay. Then that might be why. APRSIS. Let's try that again. APRSIS. Grid. And then that. And we got Dennis in the house, 86 DM, right on, man. Appreciate you coming on. Let's try that one. All right.
Alice says, is, it is not hard on the radio to run more than 20 watts? Question mark. Depends on your radio. Uh, depends totally on your radio. The 7300, I can run 100 watts digital, 15 second on, 15 second off, like on FT8, and I never nudge the temperature gauge. Only when I was running the uh, FT8 roundup, where I actually cracked from three bars to four bars of temperature towards the warm side, and it was still just way down, down in the cold side. Uh, it's your call. There you go. Oh, okay. All right, so that went out. Let's see if that actually changed anything. No, I'll have to figure it out later. Where's my raw? Oh, oh well. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Anyway, so that is probably going to do it. We're going to end up, we're going to go to the uh, Discord after chat right now. People can keep sending me messages, though. I'm just going to mute this because I'm going to switch over right now. All right. Guys, want to do a big thank you, everybody that watched. If you enjoyed this, if you could, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And uh, the biggest thanks to my patrons particularly the producer level patrons carrie blackwell jason brown jason siebert oh i got something going off here hold on <laughs> sorry where is it where did it go okay sorry something popped off on me david dancero danny miller wesley magyar barbara schrock will ladd evan hartman Admin extraordinaire, Franklin Lewis, Brad Snyder, Dennis Dunderdale, Garrett Larson, Jonathan Franson, AD6DM Dennis, who is just in the chat, the Wyoming Ham, Randall Hinsley, Dennis Mickelson, George Gaini, Andy, Kenny Miyamoto, Ron Thorson, Ken Hall, Sean Bales, uh, it is Ur Tregetovic, 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 Tregetovic. I gotta, I gotta do that again. I gotta go look at the pronunciation again. Sorry about that, Er. Chad, Rob Zarge, Devin B. Hedge, Mark Chase, Raymond Cracker, Geraldo Kelso, Rob K. Eight B. C. R. Where did it go? There we go. Lee Harrell, Michael Kearney, Steve Barker, Mark Fields, Corey Sheldon, Brad Nadow, Stephen Hunt, Connor Carroll, Mike Marusin, Mike Kearley, Harald Carpenter, and the Brew Crew. I did get through that barley wine. Cheers to you. And Stephen Hunter, Justin Rao, Stephen Carduz, Brian Fairbanks, Richard Smith, Hercules, KC1LZR, Mike Zaret, John Flowers, and Tom Wright. We are headed to Discord. The admins are posting um, right above me on the Discord. Please join us over there. It is both a text chat. You don't have to talk if you don't want to, but there is a voice component if you want to join that. You can. We cover, uh, just like you'd think, we, we have all the different sub chat rooms for talking about amateur radio in general. You know, DIY, doing spots and skeds if you wanted to set up a contact with people. Emergency preparedness. We have an area for our weekly nets that we do. And there's, of course, the after chat and the voice chats that go along with that. So if you joined us, it'd be great. It is a lot of fun. And hey, it's nothing to join. If you don't like it, you can just leave. I won't be offended. It's okay. If it's not your bag, that's okay, baby. And the link for Facebook and everything else is also in the description. So please check us out over there if you can. Again, I am Josh, KI6NAZ. I hope you enjoyed this episode i guess of the ham radio crash course live stream and i'll talk to you again soon take it easy see ya play them out let's play it out <laughs>